the myth of meditation today's myth is that if meditation isn't working for you you need to try harder harder might mean put in more hours try a more different technique torture your body by sitting in something like lotus pose which 90% of us can't or otherwise just shame yourself oh no i need to work harder at this that's why my meditation isn't working because i'm so lazy this is the teaching or the message we get from the material world that if something isn't working you need to try harder so if you cannot lose weight by going to the gym twice a week start going four times a week or try a different sport or try a different instructor the thinking being that you need to be doing something you cannot just sit idly by and hope for everything to recover the problem is this advice sometimes doesn't even work in the material world many businesses that fail fail because the owners kept on doing the wrong thing if they had just stopped and meditated they would have realized a lot sooner that their business idea was useless this is made worse in companies started by or funded by venture capitalists because they expect you to do something even if that something doesn't make sense so even in the material world this idea of always doing something doesn't always work but it is especially harmful in the spiritual world the spiritual world is one of learning to relax to let go to accept that we are not the masters of our own destiny not that we are helpless to some god or karma but rather we are a part of something bigger and it is this something bigger that is guiding our path but this necessarily means that the ego part of us the part of us we normally call ourselves the part we introduce at parties is not the one always in control why does this matter in the spiritual world we are asked to meditate it is not enough to read the theory 
to read spiritual texts or inspiring books unless one also practices meditation is a lot like riding a bike or learning to ride a bike in that 5 minutes of practice is worth more than hours of reading books or talking to others and this leads to the problem that many meditators face meditation is hard it sometimes doesn't work sometimes your mind will fight against it you will get angry you will get irritated you will get bored or fall asleep sometimes life will fight against it you will have problems at work or in your personal life and you will not be able to meditate even for a few minutes and like with losing weight people will blame themselves shame themselves judge themselves and promise to try harder they will try to sit for an hour in meditation every day and sometimes they might even succeed but then again problems will arise and they will give up like a person caught in a yo-yo diet people start and give up meditation regularly always feeling they cannot get it or that it is not for them that's one of the reasons people run after gurus because they hope someone else will fix all their problems but the guru has his, his or her own problems they would rather fix their own problems than fixing yours because let's admit it if your problems were easy to fix they would have been fixed by now and so people worry my meditation isn't working what should i do what should i do what should i do and like i said they want to sit for longer torture their body by sitting in uncomfortable poses or try a different meditation or in general try to work harder at it but the spiritual life is not like the material life working harder usually makes things worse because it is the ego the part of our mind that identifies with the body the ego trying to assert control over our meditation but the ego is the problem 
to begin with. It is like you have a lazy boss who never comes in and expects his employees to do all the work, even his work. And one day, when he realizes the company is going in a loss, he wants to find out whose fault it is. Do you think such a boss will ever point the finger at himself? No. He will always find someone else to blame. And so it is with our mind. Our mind, our overactive mind, is the reason why our meditation usually fails. And asking the mind for more solutions, whether it is sitting longer or trying something new, is bound to fail because the mind will never accept that it is the problem. It will always try to find fault outside. So what should we do? Just give up at the first sign of problems? No. Because that is again what the egoic mind wants. It doesn't want to lose control of our life and will fight to stay in control. One of the mind's best defenses Oh, this isn't working. Let's just quit. We can do other things. There are better things to do in life. Why am I wasting life in this? Why am I wasting my time? I could be doing other stuff. That is the classical mind excuse. I could be doing better stuff with my time. But the fact is, time is just an illusion created by the mind itself to keep us enslaved. The mind works in time but the spirit doesn't. Our own spirit doesn't work in time. There is no time where awakening occurs. And that's why many masters say that you can become enlightened this very second. Because in truth, there is no time for the being, for our own spirit. Coming back to our question, what do we do? In meditation, we are asked to accept life as it is. If we are not perfectly healthy, if we are fat, if we are not good looking, if we are not rich, if we don't have the perfect spouse, if our job sucks, if life is going to hell, we are told to accept it as it is. Because everything that comes in front of us is a teaching from our own inner teacher. Our inner teacher is trying to show us where we are incomplete so that we can improve ourselves. How do we know that? Because we are facing the situations we are facing. If life didn't want us to face bad situations, it would not have brought bad situations in front of us. 
many spiritual people accept this and accept that they have to remain loving and kind even while the world around them isn't. But there's a second step to this. Just as we have to accept the physical world as it is, we also have to accept our spiritual world, our spiritual life as it is. It is possible that our meditation isn't going great or that it go goes great one day and not the other or that we can only meditate for five minutes a day. None of that matters. As long as we keep meditating even for five minutes a day. That's what I say. If you don't have an hour make sure at least five minutes. You have to accept that just like the material life, the spiritual life will not flow perfectly, at least not for many years in the beginning. That's why these grand plans of meditating for hours usually never work because we never get hours. We get at most a few minutes now and then if we are lucky. And that's life. The key is to continue making little progress, meditating for five minutes a day, if that is all you can do. And sometimes you might have to change your technique. I know I said at the beginning that running after techniques is a form of doing, a form of the ego trying to take control of the process. But sometimes it is good to change techniques, to try a different meditation, to see if it suits you better. But always accepting that nothing will go perfect. You might have visions or dreams one day, beautiful dreams, and you might think your meditation is working, but that will be followed by periods in which nothing is happening or nothing seems to be happening. And many people at this stage think, oh, I must be doing something wrong. I need to try harder. I need to try a different technique. But the answer is no, it is not you. Don't take it personally. Pushing yourself in the spiritual life only makes it worse. You cannot force your way into enlightenment. The process takes time. And how much time will depend on you. It will depend on how quickly you're willing to give up your attachments which includes the attachment to enlightenment. If you're thinking, oh, when will I become enlightened? When will I become a Buddha? When will I get Nirvana? Then you're attached to enlightenment. And this very attachment is holding you back. And there is no answer. You just have to give it up. So what do you do? If your meditation isn't working, you're having no effect. You sit every day for five minutes, say, 
and you just sit there, spend that five minutes daydreaming about your attractive neighbor. <laughs> the first thing is that five minutes every day is more powerful than one hour once a week. Try to spend at least five minutes a day in meditation. But meditation doesn't have to be forcing your mind to become quiet. It can be a form of self-inquiry, like who am I? Or if you find that too abstract, just write down Or meditate on, think about where you failed spiritually in life. Like, did you get angry at someone? Did you snap at someone? Just write down why. What happened there? No need to judge yourself. Just write down why you think it happened and how you can avoid it in the future. This is also a form of meditation because it helps clears up the junk in your mind. But while you're doing this meditation, even if it's only for five minutes a day, keep in mind that you, the egoic mind, the part that it is that is thinking that it is doing the meditation, that part of the mind is not in control. In fact, the mind is not in control at all. And it is an illusion to think that we are meditating. It is a big illusion. It is not us that is meditating. It is something inside of us. Something bigger than us. Something more powerful than us. Something more beautiful than us. That is meditating through us. And that is trying to burst out of our body and mind. So when we meditate, when we sit down, it is not the us that is meditating. It is the something else. You can call it being, you can call it spirit, you can even call it God. But not the God of religions. God was originally meant by the mystics. So this being spirit inside of us, spirit that is trying to burst out of us, that is the one meditating through us. It is not us. And once you realize this, you realize that feeling depressed or sad, oh, I couldn't sit in meditation yesterday, I was so angry, or whatever, is a waste of time. Because it is not you doing the meditation. The you part of you, the form identity, the part of you that identifies itself at parties. Oh, I'm so and so, Mr. X and I'm Mr. X, Y, Z, and I work at ABC Company. I'm so rich. That part of you needs to step away from the meditation. Seriously. Just walk away, leave it. And leaving it means accepting that sometimes the meditation will be great, that you might get visions or you might get beautiful dreams. And sometimes you will get nothing. But if you run after the dreams or the visions, that is your ego trying to assert control over the process. And trust me, that always ends badly. You will lose whatever spiritual progress you made. Well, you won't lose it, but it will it'll look like you lost it because the mind cannot grasp awakening. Awakening is like water. If you try to hold it in your hands, it will slip away. Awakening is like that. The more you try to grab it, the more it slips from your fingers. So if your meditation, if you think that your meditation isn't working, Trust me, it is. 
because the being inside of you the god inside of you that is the one doing the meditation and that knows what to do so you might think if this being is doing the meditation then why do i need to do anything i can continue playing video games or watching porn <laughs> while while god meditates inside of me <laughs> the problem with that is that this being inside of us is currently not very strong the light of the being is very weak and we need to actively increase the light by quieting our mind or at least by not letting thoughts of hatred or anger cloud our judgment once the mind is quiet once it is at peace that's when this being shines through you but in the f- first few stages you have to actively work to quiet the mind but even while you're meditating even while you're trying to quiet the mind even while you're sitting there thinking damn i'm i must stop thinking i must stop thinking i must stop thinking even while you're doing that you have to realize that it's not about you it's not you who's doing the meditation it's something that's doing it through you and this might be hard for the ego to accept because the ego will say well why should i bother then but that's one of the traps of the ego the thinking that if the egoic mind isn't in control the thing isn't worth doing so continue meditating 5 minutes a day 10 minutes a day the key is to do it every day if you don't have time just take 2 minutes of deep breath early morning before starting work and before coming home just a few deep breaths even these few deep breaths are more than enough because when you're breathing deeply when you're breathing consciously you're automatically getting in touch with the inner being the spirit inside of you this is the bare minimum you can do and this will help the being inside of you to shine and once it starts shining it it will help you remove many of the blockages in your mind people use the word grace but they use it in a religious way as in god's grace and usually in the religions god's grace is given to so called good people who follow the rules of the religions and give 5 pounds a day 5 pounds a month to a charity but that's not how grace works grace works that if you show that you're serious about meditation that you continue through it no matter how bad you feel no matter how shit you feel no matter how much your life is going to hell even if you feel like you know just sometimes you feel you just like you just want to kill yourself even then you continue spending 5 minutes a day meditating accepting that even though you are feeling shit it doesn't matter because you are not the one meditating if you continue doing that something inside of you awakens and you'll suddenly see a big shift in your life you know your your life won't change but your mind will change the course of a uh, miracle calls in this this the call is a miracle it's a shift in perception the world outside remains the same but your perception changes and you suddenly realize oh my god i've been seeing everything so wrong and that's grace and that cannot come through effort it comes from the 
being inside of us shining in its beauty is something inside of us that shines and gives us this grace gives us this shift in perception and you'll get many shifts in perceptions there's no one big we just don't awaken one day well some people do but for most people it's a slow process it's a spiral process instead of going straight up it goes around in circles and might some of these circles might take years but you're always slowly moving up even if you don't think so but it's always important to remember that it's not us that is something inside of us that's trying to grow out and all we need to do is get out of the way and in the in the beginning at least help the inner being by spending a few minutes a day meditating but never think that it is you doing the meditation or that trying harder will make it or spending if you spend 1 hour a day instead of 5 minutes a day your meditation will be stronger no it won't that's the ego ego thinking saying i will control this i will work twice as hard and get twice as many promotions but the spiritual life is not like your job just staying later to impress the boss <laughs> doesn't work here <laughs> your inner boss is not impressed by how many hours you put in but how much inner work you have done how much kindness how much compassion you have shown to others how much love have you shown to others that's what the inner boss cares about and not about how many hours you are putting in you cannot fool the inner boss you cannot stay late at office while playing solitaire and impressing your boss that might work with your outer boss but it doesn't work with the inner boss because the inner boss is always inside of us it is us and it knows our deep spiritual truth it cannot be fooled or lied to but it is also very loving and compassionate it knows we are not perfect it knows that we cannot control our mind it does not get angry at us or judge us when you see a baby trying to walk and falling down you don't jump on it and say you fucking idiot can't you even walk it is so easy to do what's your problem boy mean if you talk to children like that social services <laughs> will take away your children <laughs> and throw you in jail but we talk to ourselves like that we abuse ourselves in the same way what an idiot i am i've been meditating for 10 years and for nothing you need to have compassion for yourself because the inner teacher shows us compassion and the more full of anger and hatred you are even at yourself especially at yourself the further you get away from the inner teacher that's why all these religions old religion said you should do social work or help other poor people they were right in a way because doing a good work even even in the outer world helps your inner world as well it helps your mind become calmer calm peaceful more joyful and it helps the inner being shine through but meditating is more powerful than doing charity because you're working directly on the inner self instead of indirectly helping the poor or donating is a good is a good work and you should do it if you have the time but remember it's an indirect way of working with the inner being while meditation is a direct way I mean going on for too long so to summarize it is not you doing the meditation it is something inside of you you need to get out of its way but not by playing video games or watching porn but by doing the work by doing the meditation and like the gita says not worrying about the results the results are not in your hand you cannot control this being or how you cannot control how fast your spiritual progress will be that is something that is beyond your control because 
the ego can never control awakening or enlightenment. The only thing in your control is to do the work, to do the meditation, to try to be as kind and loving and compassionate as possible, and then forget about it. Because whether you awaken or not, whether you become enlightened or not, that will not be decided by you. It will be decided by the being who is trying to grow from within you. This spirit that lives in your heart and is trying to grow out. And you can never control this being because that being is in a way God. It is a God that lives inside of all of us. And that is us. So don't worry about your meditation do not working. Just keep doing it and have faith that there is something bigger working through you. Something huge and beautiful working through you. And trust that something, that inner being to do the work right. Just step out of its way. That's all I can say. And the best way is through deep conscious breathing. So we leave with that in breath. Another in breath and this time we'll hold in. Hold. Out. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. If you want a free course on how to contact your inner teacher, your own spiritual guide, the part of the divine who lives inside of you and is guiding your spiritual progress, then please go to my website thepathtojoy.org that is thepathtojoy.org thank you